it's time for Bible. Um, I hope you enjoyed your breakfast. Okay, so what I need for you to do is I need for you to put your juice down, your donut, whatever it is you're eating or drinking, so that we can um, recite our pet pledges, okay? So I need for you to stand nice and tall, facing the American flag. Make sure your shoulders are back, okay? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming They were a mean group of people. They just terrified the Israelites. 
Israelites all the time. You know, they mistreated them. They probably killed many of them. They killed their animals. The Israelites had to go and hide in caves because they were just, they tormented them constantly. So um, the Lord sent an angel to, to Gideon and told him that he was going to use him. And um, remember, Gideon was like, okay, you know, you need to prove to me that you're going to be with me. And he asked the Lord to show him two different things that had to do with the, the wool of the sheep. And God proved to Gideon that he was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do, that he was going to be with him. And so um, Gideon was amped up, you know what I mean? And he was willing to, to take on the Midianites. And, um, and he had a lot of men. He had 22,000 men um, in his army. So he was like, yeah, we can stomp them, right? And then all of a sudden, God is like, you know what, boy, that's too many men. No, 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 because... What happens is that sometimes God allows us to do things and he's done it for us, but we think we've done it. And so that's what he was trying to prevent Gideon from thinking was that Gideon and his men um, would win. But God was like, no, 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 no. I'm the reason y'all going to win. Okay. So anyway, so uh, God told Gideon to go before his, his army and say, you know, if anyone was afraid, that you could go home. Well, <laughs> a whole bunch of them left. There were like only 10,000 left, right? And so um, Gideon still felt pretty good about that because he still had a lot of men, but God was like, no, there's still too many men. And Gideon was like, but God. And God said, but what? Just be obedient, okay? And so um, Gideon told, um, God told Gideon to take the men down to the stream and um, to get a drink of water. Those who drank the water like dogs, you know, they put dogs put their face in the bowl and drink the water. And if something should come up and hit the dog, the dog would never know what hit it because its face is down in its dog bowl. And so um, God said, if they drink like dogs, send them home. But if the men drink, if they cup their hands like this and drink out of the cup of their hand, you keep those, okay? So, I guess, you know, Gideon was like, well, okay, because he thought that maybe a lot of the men would drink out of the cup of their hands. But 9,700 men drank like a dog. So, he had sent all of them home. Which left Gideon with only 300 men in his army. So, Gideon had started to feel afraid again. He's like, but, you know... The Midianites, there's so many of them. They've been brutalizing us. They've been terrorizing us. But God, you know, sometimes we say, but God, don't we? But you know what? <laughs> and, and I think, something's in my face. Um, I think God likes it, like sometimes for us to say, but God, how do you want to do this? How am I going to do this? And it's okay to question God sometimes because I think he likes the fact that maybe we're curious on how he's going to work this out. But if we just trust him and have faith and be obedient to whatever he tells us to do, he always does work it out. So, but with Gideon, Gideon was a still, he was still a little bit, um, he was he was weary, you know, and he had a lot of doubt. So God told him to take his, his servant and to go down into the valley where the Midianite camp was. Okay, remember I told you that a valley is like a low lane place, mountains surround it. Well, the Midianite camp was down in the valley. And so God said, look, get, um, Gideon, take your servant. You guys sneak down there where the Midianite camp is, and I want you to listen to what they're saying. Okay? Now, that's where we left off for the story, and that's what we're going to pick up today. Okay, so just as Gideon and his servant arrived, he heard one of um, them talking to his friend about a dream he had. He was saying, I dreamt that around that a round loaf of bread came rolling into our camp. Hmm. A loaf of bread came rolling down into the camp. Remember, they were in a low-lying area. So I could maybe think maybe there's a rock rolling down, but a loaf of bread, <laughs> okay. Anyway, it said it came so fast that it ran right into one of our tents and made it 
fall. Okay. Um, I don't know if, if Gideon could interpret that dream. I don't know, but let's determine, let's find out what happens next. His friend responded, this must mean the sword of Gideon and that God will help him defeat the Midianites. As soon as Gideon heard this, he worshiped God and ran back to the camp. He returned and called out, get up! Get up, soldiers! The Lord has given us the Midianite camp. Okay, let me tell you something. When Gideon, when God first came to Gideon, God had already given the Midianite camp to Gideon. Gideon didn't see things the way God saw them. You know, and, and what, what Gideon had to be convinced to do was, hey, take up your, your glasses, because your glasses are faulty. You don't see clearly through your glasses. Put on the glasses of God, and you'll see what I'm going to do. And so at this particular time, when Gideon, um, Gideon heard the dream and um, realized that God was going to give him the Midianite, he felt, he felt enthusiastic. He felt like he was a, a winner. And boys and girls, you and I are winners through Jesus Christ. Jesus has never lost anything. He's always won at anything he has set out to do. And that's how he wants us to feel. Through him, we are winners. So Gideon is excited now about the fact that God is going to allow them to win <clears throat> or cause them to win. He decided that all the men in three groups, um, he decided all the men in the three groups and um, to give them all trumpets and empty jars um, with torches inside of them. So each man received a, a trumpet, okay, and then each man we see some type of glass bottle or jar, and inside of the bottle was a was a torch. And I'm sure that was probably used if they were running. The torch would not go out, but the jar would protect it. But there was also another reason why they had jars. Okay, Gideon and the men surrounded the camp in three groups. Okay, because remember he had divided them up into three groups. And I remember also that they were looking down at the valley. So Gideon and his 300 men were looking down at the Midianite camp, okay? And if you, I'm going to tell you a valley because it's surrounded by mountains or high places, usually the valley is very dark, very, very dark. If you do not like have campfires or something going on, it's completely black down there. And because it was in the middle of the night, of course there was probably no campfires or anything like that because they were sleeping, okay? They blew their trumpets and yelled. <laughs> I'm sure the Midianites were like scared out of their minds. For the Lord and for Gideon. So, boys and girls, um, what I, there was another Bible story that I was telling you about where, oh, it was the walls of Jericho. When Joshua had to march around the city of Jericho, he did it quietly. And then on the seventh day, <clears throat> he marched around and they were they were praising God. They were yelling and screaming. The same thing in this particular situation too. Gideon, they were shouting, blowing the horns, and they were praising God. Praise the Lord and the sword of Gideon. So they were praising God as they were running down the hill. Okay, again scaring the Midianites out of their mind. Then they broke the jars that made a lot of noise also okay probably i don't know it didn't i don't know that it would sound like gunfire but it was a noise that they probably had never really heard before especially at one time just think 300 jars breaking with all of this other screaming noise they probably thought it was an earthquake maybe fire raining from the sky who knows it says then they broke the jars they were carrying holding onto the torches with one hand and the trumpet in the other hand shouting, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. When the Midianites heard this, they started yelling and running around. They had no idea, what's going on? What's going on? And they were running into each other because there was no light. They had pulled their swords, okay? Can you imagine? Okay, Miss O'Donnell's eyes are closed and I have a sword. Because, and the reason why my eyes are closed because you can't see anything with your eyes closed, it's dark. So the Midianites, 
were running around in the dark as if their eyes were closed and they were taking their swords and they were doing this. Now, what were they hitting? Possibly each other. They were probably killing each other because they didn't know what to swing at. Okay? So, it could because it was total chaos. It was confusion. Okay? Then, um, when all the trumpets started, again, the Lord caused the Midianites to start freaking out and they started to turn on each other with their swords. <laughs> they couldn't see, for first of all, and they had no idea where this noise was coming from, okay? The rest that got away were captured by the men of Ephraim by the Jordan because Gideon's, Gideon had sent messengers ahead of them to let them know that they were coming. Boys and, God, boys and girls, when God has a plan and you work his plan, you will experience nothing but success. You will be a winner all the time. That was the day God saved Gideon and defeated the Midianites. Without God, none of this would have been possible. Even with all his 22,000 men that he started out with, he wouldn't have won because that wasn't God's plan. Okay? I hope that after, get, after that, um, Gideon learned his lesson and stopped worrying. And that's what you and I need to do. We need to put our issues in the, at the hand or at the feet of the Lord and let God work them out. Like I said, he's never lost a battle. But Jesus is a winner. He's won everything. So we need to get behind him so we can be winners through Christ too. With God, nothing is impossible. Next time you're in a tough situation, like we are now, boys and girls, we're in a tough situation with the coronavirus, with COVID-19. We don't know what's going to happen with this um, this virus. We don't know. Um, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Our government doesn't know. Our doctors don't know. But God knows. So what we do is we ask God first of all to protect us, to lead, guide, and direct us, and obey him we are to obey him and also the bible says we are to obey the laws of the land so if the governor says stay home stay home if your mommy says come inside you cannot ride your bicycle you go inside like she told you to do we are to be obedient and that's also the story of Gideon the only thing God wanted him to do was obey him because God had the plan. God had already worked it out, okay? So we are to, first of all, obey, trust God's hand because it's, it's, it's unfailing. It cannot fail. God cannot fail. We are to obey and trust, okay? Because he loves us. He loves us. Okay, and again, when you get tired, when you get tired of, of obeying, <laughs> keep obeying. Okay, but when you get tired, rest, but don't quit. Okay, I love you. That's the end of the Bible, and I'll see you back here for Bonnie's.